Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography in my office. This is a channel that I've set up to share my experiences of wildlife and nature with others. So let's go. There's a saying that one swallow doesn't make a summer, but uh, lots of swallows do make a summer, especially here in the UK. And it's the, the one bird that people often look out for to tell them that, that summer's on the doorstep. Um, this is probably the most difficult video of all the series of videos that I've made on birds. Uh, the subject matter, the swallow family, are extremely difficult um, to photograph. Um, so what I want to do in this video is share with you my experience and frustrations uh, and how to photograph swallows. What we'll do is we'll look at how to identify swallows, where to find swallows, We'll look at the swallow, some swallow behaviour and then what I'll do is I'll share that experience of photographing swallows. So let's go. When I talk about the swallow, uh, I'm talking about the swallow family. And the swallow family consists of three main species. There's the, the sand martin, the house martin and the barn swallow, or commonly known here in the UK just as the swallow. Um, I don't consider swifts, they're not actually members of the swallow family. In fact, swifts are more closely related to hummingbirds than they are to swallows. So we're going to look at the three members of the swallow family. So when I say swallow, I mean the three members, the sand martin, the house martin and the swallow. Okay, looking at each of the, the, the swallow members in turn, we'll start off with the, the sand martin, which is the smallest member of the swallow family. Sand, man, sand martin is a, a brown bird. It's mainly brown on the top and, and white underneath, and it has a brown band across its chest and a small forked tail. Moving on to the, the house martin. The house martin is mainly black on top with a, a glossy blue um, tint to the back, uh, and it's mainly white underneath. Um, it's got a, a pure white tail, which is a real identifying feature of the, the house martin. And again, it's got a short forked tail. Next we have the barn swallow, or the swallow as it's commonly known. Uh, the swallow is, is a mixture of colours. It's mainly blue, glossy blue and black on the back. It's got a red tint to the, the head and the chin. Uh, it has a, a glossy blue bib and it's mainly white, creamy white underneath and it's got a long forked tail which is the real identifying feature of the swallow. When it comes to trying to differentiate the difference between the, the males and the females with the, both the sand martin and the house martin it's very difficult. Um, unless you see the two of them actually sat next together um, it's really to do with size, the, the female has been slightly smaller. Very difficult to tell the difference between male and female, sand martin and house martin. However, when it comes to the swallow, again, it's difficult to, to tell the difference between the male and the female. Uh, and really, you need the two of them to be sat together. And hopefully in this little clip of video and, and uh, image that will show you, you'll be able to see the differences. Uh, the difference between a, a male and a female swallow is that the forked scissor tail on the male is longer than it is on the female and the other difference is the bib on the chest. The bib on the female is shallower than that on the male and hopefully you'll see that in these clips and photographs. Okay now that we've identified the, the swallows uh, where we're going to find them. First one we're going to start with is the, is the sand martin. Sand martins can be found near near water is the, the main habitat um, and they get together in nesting colonies um, and build their nests into natural sandbanks uh, hence the name San Martin. Um, those colonies can be as big as up to about a hundred pairs. They will sometimes perch uh, on branches and, and reeds close to the water uh, and sometimes on overhead wire and fences as well. Sand martin. Sand martins will excavate their tunnels in dry sandy banks and the, the, they can live in colonies of up to about a hundred pairs. Um, they'll lay between four and five eggs in late May. Um, 
The nest itself, or the nest chamber, is basically a tunnel complex. These tunnels are about a metre long, and they're, they're slightly aimed uphill to, to aid drainage. And the, the nest itself is, is lined by straw, which the birds will collect. And I'll show you a little clip of that now. Next we have the house martin, so where are we going to find the, the house martin? Um, house martins are found all over the UK and they're mostly associated with man because of the types of dwellings that they, they can be found in. And they're mainly found around towns and villages. House martins can also be found um, or frequently seen in areas of um, mixed agricultural agriculture. Uh, and if there's a water source nearby, even, even better, because um, that's where the, the birds will, will go to drink. So they can be found near water as well. So human habitation, agricultural land and found near water, the house martin. House martins um, nest, uh, they, they build them uh, on the outer walls of buildings under the eaves. I'll show you a quick picture of that now. Um, house martins uh, again will, like, like sand martins, form colonies, uh, but the numbers are a lot less. Um, a house martin colony will probably consist of about four or five nests in around neighbouring buildings. Um, the nest is, is made of pellets and I'll show you a little clip of uh, House Martins actually collecting the mud to, to build their nests and then the, the nest itself is, is lined with straw. House Martins will lay four to five eggs uh, and are incubated by both parents until the birds are, are fully fledged. So both parents look after the, the young. One of the best places to find swallows is actually um, stable yards. And I'm fortunate enough that I've been given permission to come here uh, and photograph the swallows that I've decided to nest here this year. And this is just a quick scan of the type of buildings that swallows will use. In that window, top left window, um, in there, there are some swallows nesting. Again, the swallow will build its nest from mud it collects. Again, I'll show you some pictures. Um, both parents will, will, will build a nest and again the nest is lined with, with, with straw and the swallows will lay between three to eight eggs. They have quite a large um, clutch of, of young to look after. Um, and swallows can go on to actually complete two to three clutches uh, in, in, in a year. But this is the ideal place to, to try and find swallows. Um, before you can photograph them you've got to find them and this is one of the best places, farm outbuildings. Okay, what I just want to quickly cover now is um, the diet of the swallows. Uh, all three members of the swallow family all feed on insects, that's the main staple diet. But what you'll often find is that the sand martins will feed at one level, house martins at another level, and then swallows at another level. But there is one occasion when all three of them will come together, and that's over water. And the best time to, to see that is normally on an overcast day. Um, it brings the, all three species of the swallows over water to feed together and that can give you a great opportunity to photograph all three members in one location. However, you need to be careful about your exposure settings uh, when you've got an overcast day. You'll end up with, 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 with some high ISOs because of the speeds that you need to use to get the photographs of swallows in flight. Okay, what I want to do now is share with you my experience of photographing swallows. I'll look at the kit that I've, that I've been using, I'll talk about the camera settings uh, and I'll share with you what I consider to be my top three tips on how to photograph swallows. Now, swallows can be photo photographed at any time um, between spring and autumn and I would suggest that the month of May and June when they're actually nest building is the best time to actually get your chance to, to get good photographs of them. 
When it comes to camera settings, again, I'm not going to go into specifics because I've got Canon R5. I'll just stick to um, what I consider a generic settings on a camera, um, no matter what camera you've got. Uh, so the settings that I would set at is AFC, continuous focus, or for instance of Canon at several. Um, make sure you set it to its highest frame rate. I can get 20 frames per second on this with the electronic shutter. Uh, and then set it for group focus. I tried eye detection, animal focus, but because House Martin and Swallow have got really dark heads and dark eyes, sometimes it can be very difficult if you if you're using that for it to 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 lock on straight away. And I found that by using a group focus, about nine focus points, um, I found that to be better for locking onto the bird quicker and getting the shots that I'm after. Okay, what exposure settings do I recommend? Well, swallows, as we, we, we know, are very fast and, and erratic flyers, um, and they, they fly at some very high speeds indeed. So you need to be able to freeze the action for the swallows in flight. So that demands a high shutter speed. Shutter speed that I would recommend is the absolute minimum is 1 3,200th of a second, upwards to 6,000, depending on the light. The more light you've got, the higher the shutter speed you're going to get in relation to the amount of ISO that you're going to have. Now, for aperture, um, for birds in flight, if you've got a static bird, I'd leave it at 7.1. Um, for photographing swallows in flight, I'd step it up one more and I have set my aperture at f.8 uh, and that in my experience is the optimum setting for aperture for, for swallows in flight. And I always shoot in I, auto ISO and the reason for that is just changing light. Unless you've got real clear light, um, I always set it on uh, auto ISO. Tip number three is all about the background. It's easier to get good images of swallows in flight against a, a clear sky or a clear background. Swallows are, are um, dark coloured, so the lighter the background, um, the better it is to get um, your, your, your image. And what you're really trying to, the, the real ultimate thing you're trying to do is get good separation between the bird and the nearest background. Uh, also helps to, to, to blur the background out. But that's easier said than done with, with, with swallows, it really is. Um, so tip number three is to think about your background and what you're looking to do is get your, 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 your swallow uh, in flight against a good clear sky or a background. Okay, tip number two in how to photograph swallows is all about wind direction. In the ideal world, you want both the sun and the wind behind you. Um, the wind direction, um, birds fly into the wind uh, and it slows them down. And because you've got such a, a high speed uh, erratic flyer like, like, like the swallows, um, ideally you want to be shooting into the wind um, and that just gives you that better chance as the birds come into land um, to get that good shot that you're after. Also if you have it to shoot against the sky um, you need to think about um, exposure compensation. Uh, on a day like today where it's very bright um, I'm having to, to go to plus two uh, exposure compensation so you need to think about that as well. Tip number one is identify flight patterns. Um, this has saved me so much time and effort. When I started out, I spent too much time chasing swallows. Don't chase them, let them come to you. Ideally, what you're looking for is an indicator of taking into account things like the wind and the light is, do they have a pattern? Are they actually following a certain route? Um, for instance, the swallows in the barn behind me uh, are coming in and out of the barn, uh, and I've shown you some photographs of that. So identify um, how, they, how they, they, they come in and how they come out, and set yourself up to, to intercept them as they're doing that. So try and identify flight patterns. Um, some of the best places to do that are against telephone lines and, and, and fence lines. Um, where the, the, the birds will actually come down. Uh, so what you, you're looking to do is what direction are they, they they're coming into land and what direction are they taking off into. And again, that, a lot of that's got to do with the wind. So tip number one is identify flight patterns, save you a hell of a lot of time. 
Okay, what I want to do now is um, leave you with um, what I consider are some of my um, best images of swallows. I'm by no means an expert. Um, I've learned a hell of a lot on this this project of photographing swallows, and I'll continue to learn. Uh, what I would consider to be my best photograph of a swallow, I will always want to better that, and that's what keeps me going out and, and, and photographing birds. I'm always looking for that better picture. Um, so, good luck. Okay, thanks for watching Kevin Hartley Photography and how to photograph swallows. Uh, I, I'm sure, as you'll have found in the video, they are quite a difficult subject to, to photograph. However, if you get it right, you can get some really uh, nice photographs. So, all I would like to do is ask you that if you've liked this video, could you hit the like button? Could I also ask you to subscribe to my channel, Kevin Hartley Photography? It doesn't cost anything, it's completely free. And it always gives me that incentive to keep coming out in, here into the English countryside and uh, to photograph the wildlife and nature. So, until the next time, stay safe, take care, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.